Episode 109, Wayne in with Travis Hartman. I am B-Money, the producer. That over there is Weekend Trap. Weekend Trap, hot off the presses this week. It looks like our boy, Naoe Inoue, taking on now Stephen Fulton for the WBC and WBO 122-pound titles. Looking like they're trying to earmark some time in the spring. In Japan, this is Inoue's first matchup stepping up in weight after dropping those titles. Awesome. I think everybody should take notes from Inoue because he's the monster. He's cleaned out divisions, and now he's like, you know what? I'm done with this division. I'm going to go up in weight class, and I'm going to try to clean out that division. And he's fighting a world champion who has two belts, so the monster. He is the monster. And you know what? I like it because this guy is on the pound-for-pound list of the best in the world. So good for Inoue. Um, I think it's great for boxing. I think it's great for – all the fans because this guy's a very exciting fighter and now he's fighting i believe uh, fulton is a usa guy so i think that's gonna be good in a way needs to bring his talents to the u.s as well yeah at some point but that's his march now towards trying to become undisputed at a different weight class so we're looking forward to what the 122 pound future holds for the monster weekend trav let's also talk a little bit briefly there was a fight this past weekend chris eubank jr took it on taking on liam smith out there across the pond what'd you see what'd you think Dude, the, the Smith brothers, because there's Liam Smith, there's Callum Smith, and I believe there's another brother. They all can fight, and they're all good. Yeah. And I liked it. Um, it got a little chippy leading up to the fight. There were some um, some words exchanged at the pre-fight press conference. Liam Smith called Eubank Jr. out for possibly being gay because uh, he wore a rainbow ribbon. And then I believe Eubank took a shot back at him, talked about him stepping out on his wife, you said, right? Um, yeah. But – It got real chippy, and um, it ended not very good for one guy. Here at at Wayne and with Travis Harmon, we do not condone any sort of uh, vicious attacks verbally or whatnot against uh, someone else's belief structure. We actually disrespect everybody equally. Everybody gets disrespected equally on Wayne and with Travis Harmon. Absolutely. So, Chris Eubank, uh, taken down, knocked out, knocked out. Pretty silly. Pretty violent fashion. In fact, we can travel. We actually rewatched this. Uh, the first knockdown, that should have been it. I don't see how the ref kept this fight going. Yep. yep. You're right. And I mean, it's we got to be careful with these guys, especially guys that have been, um, you know, 30 plus pro fights, a long amateur career. It's fights like that that can do some massive damage. You know, we're coming off of the heels off of the NFL with DeMar Hamlin, who just barely took a shot to the chest. And the guy literally died on the field like twice um, by reports. Uh, so we have to make sure we take care of our boxers because boxing is a violent sport, just like uh, the NFL. It's a pretty violent sport as well. There's a lot of hits that happen. Um, so these referees, these judges, and these doctors need to really pay close attention to these fighters and I am in 100% agreement with you. They could have easily and probably 100% should have stopped that fight earlier than they did. Yeah, he was walking sideways across the ring. He said, obviously, like they always do after the fight, that he was fine after the first yeah. one. He was cl- had mental clarity. No, he didn't. He looked – his eyes were rolled back. But either way, Liam Smith, ooh, nice, nice little nice little setup, nice little knockout. Yeah, way to get uh, back on the win streak with that. That was, a good, that, was a, that was a good knockout, man, to come back on the scene. That was a top-level fight and a great knockout. And what I like is because he's such a clean cut guy. He looks like somebody's grandfather. You know, he has the he has the silver fox look. Really already, yeah. He's completely silver. Hey, you can't tell we can Trev. I got him in here somewhere. There's a there's a handful of those grays in there. Maybe a little smoke crotch too, but we don't talk about that. I don't got him there yet, but I got some I got some in the I got a lot. I got dark hair, so me and you both have dark hair. I have more gray hairs than you, but the dark hair really shows off the gray hairs because they pop out of them. So I have a lot of them on the sides too. Speaking of pop, we got Arthur better be taken on Anthony yard this coming weekend here, ESPN plus, or if you're in the UK, BT sport, it looks like at Wembley arena on Saturday, I'd say Eastern standard time here in the States, you're probably going to look at main event sometime around four or five o'clock PM, something like that. We can travel. What are you seeing with this one? Hey, this is a high-level fight. Archer Betterbeef has three of the four major world titles at light heavyweight. And the reason why we're talking about this and that it does matter is because the other person that owns a title at that weight class is uh, Bival, oh, who just Bival. Took yeah. that, who took that title um, from Canelo. Yeah. So it's important because unless Canelo rematches Bival and wins that title back, um, and if he does win that title back, then the only other person for him to face would be Archer Betterbeef. Um, if Archer Betterbeef wins this fight, which I do believe he will, Archer Betterbeef is the better fighter versus Yardy. Um, 
but it's a good fight. It's a high level fight. And I think Archer better be, if people don't know who this guy is, they better watch out because this, he's a light heavyweight and he's a killer. Look Literally up his highlights. Killer. Does he even make it out of the third round here? Uh, guy, do you think Anthony Yard's going to even make it out of the third? No, because this guy, I think that, you know, I wonder what the over under is the over under three. I don't I know. I'd have, take, I'd have to take a look, but if you can kill some time for me, I'll take a look right now. Yeah, I think that. So I think the over under probably should be somewhere around five and a half, six. I haven't looked, but that's my guess because I think um, Yardy is athletic enough and he's big enough and he, he knows how to fight. The guy does. And I think that it'll go, I think it'll be within six though. I think it'll be under six. I think if that's the over under, I think it's under six is what I think is going to uh, better be. going to knock him out within six. You would think because has better be ever gone past four or five rounds. I'm not, I don't think he's actually went the distance in any of his fights. No, right? he's, 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 right? He just knocks everyone out. Uh, let's see here. Better be. Like, yeah. Better be was 18 and 0 with 18 knockouts. Yeah. Let me get back up. Oh, wrong page. Sorry. I will get that information here. Wow. I guess I didn't realize this though. Archer better be was 38 years old. Five and a half. Dude, I I know I stopped, man. That's what I I, I think it's gonna go under. I think it'll take go the under. under take the under at plus one fifteen. In fact, I'm doing that as we speak, and yeah, that's on a uh, bet bet us. Not that we condone gambling by any folk by any means, folks. But if you take a look, if you have an account, look at the under there. Five and a half paying plus one fifteen. Uh, where better be is a minus nine hundred favorite, which is massive. So I'm taking the under five and a half rounds on that one weekend, Trev. You know what's crazy about this, um, Anthony Yard, who he's fighting, which I agree with. The under, I think, is going to be it's going to be around four or five rounds. Um, but Anthony Yardy, he was like eighteen and zero or something mm -hmm. at one time. But he used to claim that he never spars, ever. He was one of the only professional boxers that he never spars because it does too much damage leading up to the fight. He never spars is what he said, but I think he's now admitted that he does spar now because he did lose. And, but um, he was a weird guy because I remember watching one of his fights and hearing something absurd and ludicrous that he doesn't spar. And I was like, how the heck is he even fighting if he doesn't spar? Well, but he uh, did it. that's easy money to me. Uh, might as well do that. Uh, much, much easier money than trying to put money on your Dallas Cowboys here, their weekend trap is, is I the wound bet against them. Is the wound still fresh if, uh, from seeing them yes. go down in flames? Wait, you, no, listen, here's the deal. You have to manage your expectations when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. Who, so, who, are, you, who are you speaking to? <laughs> so, I'm a we, Green you, Bay Packer fan. We manage those expectations very well. No, but you, we haven't won a Super Bowl in 27 years or so. We'll be there shortly. <laughs> so I got you beat on that one. Yeah. But, it doesn't – listen, I watched it and I was a little upset, but I think the Niners should be even more upset because the Cowboys didn't play good and we still had a chance to win. Think about that. We still had some opportunities to win, and we turned the ball over like two or three times. I saw I saw a little stat or something like that. Um, the the quarterback for the Eagles, I can't, his name of just – Jalen Hurts. There we go, Jalen Hurts. The last time the Cowboys, I think, were in the Super Bowl, Jalen Hurts hadn't been born yet, hadn't gone through yeah. – uh, yeah. Through school, high school football, college football, Alabama to Oklahoma, hadn't been drafted and, and, and hadn't sat behind uh, 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 Wentz for a season and hadn't done all these things since the Cowboys were <laughs> last in the Listen, Super Bowl. I'll do you one better. When the Cowboys played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the road in Tampa just to get to work to play the Niners, right? Yeah. The Cowboys hadn't won a road playoff game. The last time they did, Dak Prescott wasn't even born either. Dak yeah. Prescott won a road playoff game for the Cowboys, and the last time they won one, he wasn't even born yet. Well, my Green Bay Packers are about to go through a uh, a a uh, cavern of misery and and tears, a waterfall of tears. I think for quite so many years. I think at least in a year, if if uh, Rogers is gone, but. It's going to take some time, so I'll be there with you, buddy. We can commiserate um, for however long it takes for both of our squads. So it's got to be a while. Back to the point of this podcast, because this is the number one Beards, Bourbon, and Boxing podcast shot in Orlando, Florida, specifically Laureate Park. Almost, sorry, got a little tongue-tied. Specifically Laureate Park, specifically in a boxing gym on the second floor of said boxing gym in the podcast room, the TH Boxing Facility podcast room, which you could see on that side of the screen. 
Yep. Depending on where I'm pointing, week and Trav is up in there. Shot on a Sunday or Monday. Today is actually Tuesday because of scheduling conflicts. Dropping on? Wednesday morning, 7.15 Eastern Standard Time in the world. In the world. Hold on. I was trying to write it in the Missed it. world. In, in the world. The wor- Look at you getting all fancy with these in graphics. The I don't even know. Producer stepping up. What is he doing over there? I don't know what she's doing. Um, So we can trap. We can trap the boxing stuff. Better be over yards. That's what we're expecting. Anything else that we need to uh, highlight uh, before we start to wrap up episode 109 here? Um, No. I mean, Javante Davis and Ryan Garcia did finalize. So I guess Oscar De La Hoya's deadline of Monday actually worked and they, they did finalize it, which was funny, but not funny. But they finalized it. They're fighting April 15th. That's a great fight to talk about eventually, but that's a long ways away. But oh, that's a blockbuster fight. How about your boy? How about your boy there, uh, uh, Jake Paul? Has he finalized something? Don't you don't well? The, I, it's never final until they're both in the ring. But looks like Tommy Fury might be happening here in a month or so. Yeah, yeah, and I I think you're. I actually, it's not finalized, finalized, but I believe they are in good faith negotiations, and I do think Tommy Fury said it's going to happen. It, it can't fall through a third time, right? Can it? They say the third time is the charm. Is the third time the charm for it to fall through, or the third time the charm for it to happen? <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. You're right. Tommy Fury and Jake Paul are finally fighting, and they actually no, it is finalized. It's in February. It's Once February again, 25th. until both guys step foot in the ring and the bell rings, Agreed. it's never final, right? And yeah, that, that one for sure. And now, and now, do we even care anymore? I said the second time, do we even care? Do we even care this time? Well, I'm sure we'll talk about it leading up to that one. Uh, but that's really it on the on the headlines from our standpoint. There's always boxing news coming out, folks, ladies and gentlemen. We try to keep up with it. Follow our socials, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook. Wayne in with Travis Hartman. You can find us on Instagram's one word. On YouTube, same thing. Wayne in with Travis Hartman. If you're not yet subscribing to our content on YouTube or Rumble. Please do subscribe. So uh, subscribe below. If you're listening to us, uh, whether it's on Spotify or any other audio source for your podcasting needs, go ahead and follow us there too. Give us a little thumb up and like everywhere we are, because you know what we need it. I feel like we're in a little bit of a YouTube funk and jail. You know, I said funk and jail, right? Yeah, let us out. Yeah, let my people go. We're not doing anything with copyrighted stuff. Come on. Yeah. Well, what is, everyone else do, does it? <laughs> I know it's so funny who gets away with it and who doesn't get away with it. Like, but come it's, on, people! It's racial, racially motivated. You know, they are racially motivated, not against me as a tan brother, but against you as a as a white brother. They are oppressing us. They are oppressing, oppressing with Travis Hartman. And I don't appreciate it unfairly because he's wearing Why are a, you single because he's wearing a pink shirt and a pink hat. That's not fair. This is this will help our I think this will help our algorithm, no? I think I would hope. I, I mean, hope like, I'm trying. I got a purple light on up there. You do. Well, look at this. We're we're trying, man. We're trying. You got you got the rainbow glasses almost too. Kind of not quite. So okay, now now this is where it falls apart. Folks. It isn't rainbow, by the way. So let's do a little recap real quick. Uh, we got Inouye taking on Stephen Fulton. That's coming up in the springtime in Japan, possibly for two of the 122 belts. Uh, um, we we had a uh, Liam Smith taking down Eubank Jr. seemingly easily um, uh, overall, and then also Which is a little uh, shocking. I thought he was yeah been yeah I, I think so. Uh, but uh, and then also better be taken on yard this weekend over in the WBO, UK. Uh, check out IBF, WBO, IBF, and what's the third title? He's got three. WBO, IBF, and WBA. Yeah. Check that out on ESPN Plus if you're stateside or BT Sport in the UK. Just don't use any of the material and put it on any social media or YouTube outlet, at least for like a week or two. Yeah. Give, give, them, give them a little buffer. Give them a little buffer. Uh, we can try final thoughts. Final thoughts. So I watched this YouTube video. It was this guy that was going around and he was interviewing people that were in their like 70s and 80s. And he was asking them what kind of advice they could give um, to the to the younger them or the next generation or whatever. And this lady, she was like 79, maybe. And she was a she worked as a nurse. She was a mental health nurse. <laughs> she was a nurse. And she, she was like, I, I like the fact that people are paying attention to mental health more and more. She was like, um, but she said something that just kind of stuck with me. And I just, I liked it because 
I do think sometimes when stuff catches mainstream, people just take off with it and don't use it for the good. And she said something. She was like, I think that people need to pay attention to mental health, she said. But she was like, I don't think people should mistaken being sad for, as an illness. And what she meant by that was she was like, you're not supposed to be happy all the time. She was like, this is what people confuse. If you're not happy all the time, she was like, that's called life. And that's called, that's what happens. You are not supposed to be happy every day. So when you're not happy every day, stop using a crutch like mental health to get you through or, or blame, play the victim part of it. She's like, mental health is important. But she was like, people need to know that being sad is a part of life and it does happen. So please don't mistake in being sad as an illness because there's a lot of real illnesses out there um, that, that you can't really, that's harder to cure, you know? And illnesses like, Heart failure, all stuff like that, you know, real diseases like AIDS, heart disease. I don't even know, but I like the fact what she said, and, and it made sense. Being sad is a part of everyday life. You are not supposed to be happy every day, okay? You're not. You are supposed to have struggles. You are supposed to have things that you overcome. To go a little biblical on us, you're supposed to have trials and tribulations. Mm. That is part of life. If you're happy all the time, I think that is a sickness there. If you're happy all the time, that's probably a sickness you probably got to get it looked at because it's not possible to be happy all the time. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> that's my final thoughts. Oh, wait, I'm not that sad. If you're sad and you know it, clap your hands. Clap your hands either way. That's your final thought? Tribulations. I didn't mean to make uh, make a, a, a joke out of it. I just like my little tool here that I could type stuff in on the screen. I liked it. I didn't okay. like it. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I got, Weekend Trav. Um, that's kind of how we're going to wrap it. Let me get my ponytail in check here. Look at that. <laughs> and good it look. Glasses are nice. It's been a long day, Weekend Trav, but we're looking forward to this content drops on Wednesday. So if you're following us, give us a thumb up, give us a like down below, comment below. What did we miss? What big news headline did we miss? We talked about a, a lot of different smatterings of things, but there's a lot of cool stuff coming up here in the next handful of months, right? Give hey. me two thumbs up like the Fonz. Hey. 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 That there's Weekend Trav. That there's B Money, a.k.a. Producer, a.k.a. The Man. Hey. Hey. God bless. Be happy, be sad.